House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer will move forward with holding FBI Director Christopher Wray in contempt of Congress. This despite meeting with Wray on Capitol Hill yesterday to view and be briefed on a document allegedly describing crimes committed by President Joe Biden. Comer says Ray still is in violation of his subpoena because he refused to, quote, hand over the unclassified record to the custody of the House Oversight Committee. Now, hearings on this matter are expected to begin Thursday. Comer revealed new details about a highly credible informant who allegedly provided information about then-Vice President Biden's bribery scheme. Let's watch. Today, FBI officials confirmed that the unclassified FBI-generated record has not been disproven and is currently being used in an ongoing investigation. The confidential human source who provided information about then Vice President Biden being involved in a criminal bribery scheme is a trusted, highly credible informant who has been used by the FBI for over 10 years and has been paid over six figures. Now, Oversight Committee ranking member and Democrat Jimmy Raskin also viewed the document in question and pushed back against Comer's characterization. Now, recall that this is under Attorney General William Barr and his hand-picked prosecutor, uh, Mr. Brady, who was a Trump appointee. They were the ones who decided that there was no grounds further based on what this confidential human source uh, reported from um, a, a, a conversation with another person. They decided that there was no grounds to escalate this up the investigative prosecutorial chain. Remember, what we're talking about here is a confidential human source reporting a conversation with someone else. So what we're, we're talking about is secondhand hearsay. Yeah, right. Again, and I, I said this yesterday, just because they didn't, the Trump people didn't take action on it, doesn't mean there's no there there. It's fair to bring it up because it might mean that, but it's still worth looking at to see it because, you know, part of the criticism that Trump people have of how things are run is that, well, it's all the, the, the actual bureaucrats who, who do the investigations for the FBI and for other organizations were hostile to Trump and perhaps would be not inclined to pursue something that cast aspersions on Joe Biden just as they slow rolled the Hunter Biden investigation or they didn't want to do it too close to the election. Mm -hmm. And in fact, intelligence officials um, helped persuade social media companies and the media to suppress the story of the laptop. Now, all that said, that doesn't mean there's necessarily something here, but how can we judge for ourselves if we can't look at this document, right? We're just relying on other people's interpretations of what it says. Well, like, let's parse the respective statements of those two gentlemen for a second. Comer's argument is that the unclassified FBI-generated record has not been disproven. Has not been disproven in the absence of much of anything at all can feel a little like you're asking that someone prove a negative in mm -hmm. order to end the investigation. I would like to see a little bit more maybe some specific statements about what he believes should be followed up on. Compare that to Raskin's statement, which is having found no evidence to corroborate the allegations. Having found no, so if there are allegations made in this document that there is no evidence, there's no supporting mm -hmm. evidence of at all. Like if I were to say, you know, I had a scooter accident last week. Mm -hmm on 16th Street. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing anywhere to indicate that I had ever checked out a scooter on that day in question, that I had been on 16th Street, that there were no witnesses, there was no uh, camera footage, nothing. Then at a certain point, how do you prove that you need to stop the investigation into whether or not I was lying about having my scooter accident? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I appreciate why conservatives, given the partisan nature of everything, would have reservations about not pursuing the investigation further. But it does seem without more that a willingness to make something public that justifies why there is so much suspicion still on the part of some conservatives, why it is not now them who are trying to politicize this moment. Right. The only way to settle this question is for this document to be made public. As well, I that's a catch-22 that as well, because there's a world where there is not anything 
that links Joe Biden to a crime, but there could be information that links Hunter Biden to a crime that is uh, politically messy and disadvantageous for other reasons, and that could be why there's an effort to not want it to be public. There's also this question about sources and exposure and those kinds of journalistic concerns that I'm sure weigh on. Well, but this isn't a journalistic, this is a... Like a whistleblower concern. Mm -hmm. I would lean toward just disclosing it because we can't resolve it any other way unless the public have access to these documents. I mean, these are highly partisan on both sides, government yeah. officials giving you their impressions and interpretations, conflicting interpretations and impressions of government documents that you can't see. So at, at some point, I, like, I, yeah, I don't trust necessarily James Comer or Jamie Raskin here because Jamie Raskin is just interested in covering for the Biden administration yeah. and Comer is interested in doing whatever he can to make Biden look bad. It so is. I can't tell if there's anything to this unless the public are allowed to view the documents, which they should almost always be allowed to do absent very serious national security concerns or I, perhaps breaking the classified. privacy of a, of a private American citizen. Yeah, the, the documents are not classified, right. point blank, period. So, that, so it's Christopher Ray's opinion that you can't see it, really. Right, <laughs> which is why Republicans are and moving forward. And whose interest forward. is that? That's, and, you know, his interest. And that's why Republicans are moving forward yeah. with holding uh, Ray in contempt of Congress, the FBI has issued statements saying that they don't think that is that is necessary, that that is in turn a political prosecution, right. that there's no, no evidence right, that warrants that. Right, because let's not that. make the mistake of thinking, well, Comer is political, Jamie Raskin is political, but somehow Christopher Wray and the FBI are non-political. They are very, very political. They are my, very much participants in this, and they're looking out for the agency's best interest, the best interest of specific employees, and I don't, I don't trust them any more than the political figures. In some ways, I trust them less than the political figures because the political figures are somewhat more accountable to democratic institutions and processes and voters than you know, the, the, the faceless bureaucrats yeah. at the FBI. Well, what do you make of the fact that the allegations first came through uh, the Trump administration? The allegation, this is from the New York Times, the allegation contained in the document was reviewed by the FBI at the time while well, Trump was in office and was found not to be supported by the facts. And the investigation was subsequently dropped with the Trump Justice Department's sign off, according to people familiar with the investigation. At, at, at that point, no one has more of a political interest or otherwise in nailing Joe Biden on this sort of a thing. I mean, sure, is but that dispositive to you? No, or I mean, tons of people. I mean, this is this does not speak well of Trump's control of his own administration. But tons of federal employees during during the Trump administration were like working to suppress pro-Trump statements on social media. Right? It's it, the, the whole criticism of what's going on is that he, he, the people weren't actually working in service of Trump, they were actually working to undermine Trump. He didn't have a very, you know, he in fact put people in who were contrary to his agenda because he was very sloppy and very careless about but, this whole but thing. Robbie, I understand that argument. You know, one person is never aware of everything and mm -hmm. especially if not the best manager and things don't fall through the cracks. But I would expect that a potential smoking gun about Joe Biden's allegedly criminal behavior would be a priority in the Trump administration, something that he did try to shepherd through closely. This is something that um, Giuliani is shepherding through this whole process, someone who is, for better or for worse, seemingly relatively close to Trump and who has mm -hmm. his, who had at one time his ear. And a complete moron. And, so, and a complete moron. But we're, are, we, are we arguing that Giuliani got this information, brought it to the Justice Department, was shepherding it through, and then it was dropped inappropriately because of a biased FBI. And at that time, Trump, Giuliani, none, none of them wanted to do anything to revive the claim. I mean, I'm not trying to play, you know, 4D chess here. If there's nothing to it, there's nothing to it. Yeah. But we can't make that determination unless we see the document. I, I think, so that, I think that that's fair. Gotta and see it. I, and maybe, maybe the pressure of trying to uh, hold Christopher Wray in contempt will lead to some change in decision making on that. Uh, but until then, we'll keep our eye on this story and yeah. we'll have more rising for you right after this.